we do have three total deceased and five uh, victims at the hospital. We can confirm that all three deceased were MSU students. Oh my God! And we still are in the process of putting together the pieces to try to solve, to try to understand what happened and why it may have happened. I want to send out uh, my deepest regrets and remorse to the families that lost children. And our Spartan hearts are broken. We're grieving, but as a community, we're grieving together. I've been keeping in touch with my friends and family, just everyone making sure I'm safe and making sure I know what to do. We uh, blockaded our door and locked it. As parents, we tell our kids, it's gonna be okay. We say that all the time. But the truth is, words are not good enough. We must act and we will. Another tragedy tonight, less than 24 hours after a gunman opened fire on the campus of Michigan State University, the community continues to reel. Late this afternoon, police identified the victims. Three students killed last night, Brian Frazier, Ariel Diamond Anderson, and Alexandria Verner. The suspect is dead, taking his own life last night. Here are the latest developments right now. As we mentioned, three students are dead. Five others are fighting for their lives, wounded and being treated in a Lansing hospital tonight. Michigan State Police found a note in the shooter's pocket after they found his body. In it, they say he threatened two other schools in New Jersey in a county where he lived several years ago. They closed for the day, but police say there is no active threat to those schools. Investigators determined the shooter did not have any ties to MSU. The focus continues to be on the victims tonight. The school is providing mental health resources to students and the campus community in this time of grieving and healing. As we were going out, cops were running in with assault rifles and yelling to like get out of the building as we fled the dining hall. So I immediately called my mom and she was so scared and she told me to stay put, but she told me to trust my instincts and I just had a feeling we should probably get out of here. And sure enough, as we're leaving, the gate's closing and we get outside and we have to sprint to our bikes because we see cops running, they're yelling, everyone's scared. There's just a fear in the air around the entire campus. Our team of WTOL 11 journalists tracking the latest developments on this tragedy for you here tonight. Michael Sandlin talking with local universities about plans in place now to alert parents and keep students safe. Dan Cummins, he is following the outpouring of support for Michigan State University this evening. But we're going to start with Kaylee Marantet. She is live in East Lansing for us. So Kaylee, we understand there are vigils planned to honor the victims tonight. Jeff, any minute we're expecting students to walk up here to the Martin Luther Chapel. Just a few minute walk from main campus across the street. A lot of students were over on campus at the two memorials set up there. One at the Rock, one at the Sparty statue outside Spartan Stadium. That's where hundreds of students have come to leave messages and leave flowers. We spoke to one student earlier who said that they're just tired of this and now they're left wondering why and how much longer is this going to happen. They're left with the heavy reality of what's happened on this campus and that they don't have three more Spartan family members. I don't understand the pain that they're going through, but I have my own pain and I feel for them. I was kind of just like prepping my body to be hit. Um, and once we hit the outside doors, everyone just like started sprinting to the cars. It was a mad dash. Whatever training you get, it doesn't prepare you for when you're in the actual situation. We are not allowed to bring our cameras into this vigil here. It's expected to start at 515. There is another one that's expected to start. It's Eastminster Presbyterian Church. That's going to be at 7 o'clock. We are going to be talking with students there and bringing you the latest updates throughout the night. Live in East Lansing, Kaylee Marantet, WTOL 11. On this day five years ago, police and families were searching for answers after another deadly school shooting, that one in Parkland, Florida. Today marked a day of prayer, service, and remembrance for the 14 students and three staff members killed at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in 2018. The shooting at MSU brings back painful memories and a message from Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. We're all broken by an all too familiar feeling. Another place that is supposed to be about community, 
and togetherness shattered by bullets and bloodshed. We know this is a uniquely American problem. You just heard the governor talking about mass shootings. She calls them a uniquely American problem. And we're taking a look at some of those numbers tonight. So far this year, the U.S. has seen more than 5,000 gun-related deaths. 215 of those victims have been minors. The, young vi the Gun Violence Archive reports 67 mass shootings involving at least four people wounded or killed, not including the shooters. Both students and staff at the University of Toledo, they are reacting to the violence on MSU's campus and discussing what can be done. Our Michael Sandlin was there on campus earlier today. Michael, what is UT's current plan of action if something like this were to happen and do the students feel safe? Jeff, safety leaders at the University of Toledo say that they follow a set procedure of many college campuses. Their officers have been trained for an immediate response and students and faculty instructed to hide and fight if they must. But some of the students tell me it might be time to take further measures. For senior Caitlin Schneider, the news of the MSU shooting has completely recontextualized walking around campus. I know it happened late at night and like even last night I was out late at night just like walking around campus like getting to my car and stuff and like thinking like oh my god I could have been out at the same time that like that happened that was like terrifying. But for U Toledo's Vice President of Public Safety, Jeff Newton, he says he doesn't need to wait for headlines to start thinking about that possibility. I, I know it hits the media uh, occasionally when there's, when there's a national event, but we think about it daily and we're always preparing uh, for an event like this. So um, I feel real confident in the University of Toledo safety plan. It's a plan that consists of two elements. Uh, you want a police department that can respond quickly and, um, and effectively, and you want a, a community that can uh, be safe by time and uh, take actions that will um, help them survive an active shooter situation. Students and faculty are trained with the Run, Hide, and Fight program, the same program used on MSU's campus. But now with the possibility of a shooter just walking up off the street, some U Toledo students say this isn't enough to make them feel safe going into class the day after. Oh, I feel like Toledo really lacks security here on campus. I, you know, you see police driving by, but I never see them actually out walking around. I, I don't even know how to contact the UTPD, so I mean, maybe not. And especially with the shooting so close to home, both girls say school shootings have become the topic of the day amongst the students. And they've already started discussing solutions to make sure it doesn't happen here. Some kind of like entrance, like security thing, maybe somebody has to check in or like something. Even just security guards or the police like out walking around instead of just driving around like the border of campus in their cars would be beneficial for everybody. However, Newton says being a public university, an open access environment is part of the deal. So gates and added security might be likely, but it uh, might be unlikely rather. But he says they're always looking at additional security to things like resident halls to keep students safe. Coming up tonight at 6, we'll hear from BGSU security teams. They discuss their safety plan and how it differs from both UT and MSU. Reporting in studio, I'm Michael Sennon, WTOL 11. People are supporting the Spartan community, of course, tonight all over social media. Especially some big names when it comes to Michigan businesses. Anchor Dan Cummins joins us live in studio now. Dan, what are some of these iconic names putting out there tonight in wake of this tragedy? Well, they want people in East Lansing to know that they are loved and supported. The Detroit Tigers took to their Twitter, sharing the Spartan logo with a message reading, we are all Spartan strong. Our hearts go out to the Michigan State community and everyone impacted by yesterday's tragedy. And Michigan-based Bigby Coffee also feeling it tonight. They posted this message to Twitter, reading in part, our hearts are heavy over this tragic incident and loss that occurred last night on Michigan State's campus. East Lansing, part of the Big B Coffee origin story, and for many of our team members and baristas, it is home. Detroit Lions and Red Wings also offered support, and there's no doubt that support will continue to pour in tonight in the wake of this tragedy. We're breaking down the other loving messages from closer to home tonight, coming up on WTOL 11 News at 6. Live in studio, Dan Cummins, WTOL 11. We will continue to track the developments of this story on air and online. If you don't already have it, download the free WTOL 11 News app. You can find the latest breaking news from the tragedy at Michigan State University. You can also sign up to get alerts sent to your phone as news breaks.